Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we'll be creating a spiral of fire. To get started let's go ahead and delete the default cube and then press shift A and let's add in any mesh object. Let's go with a UV sphere. Now let's jump over to the geometry nodes workspace. We're going to be using geometry nodes to create the spiral. Let's go ahead and create a new system and then get rid of this connection we're not going to need it. Now let's add in the spiral. To do this go over to the curve primitives and then select the curve spiral. If we take the curve and plug it into the geometry, we can see exactly what it looks like. Over here on the left side, you can control the resolution, rotations, and the radius of the start and end points. Let's set the resolution to 64 so it's a bit of a smoother curve. And then we'll set the rotations. Let's go with a value of 2.5 so it's just a little bit taller. If you want to, you can change the start and the end. If you want it to be bigger at the start or smaller, it's all up to you. It's all customizable and you can change it however you like. I'm going to set the end radius to one so it's a little bit skinnier just like that. And then for the height, let's go with a value of 2.5 as well. That looks pretty good to me. And now what we can do is add in the node to control the start and the end points. I'm going to press shift A, go over to curve and then select the trim curve node. We'll place that right here. The start and the end values now control the start and the end of the curves. If we drag the end lower, you can see it's getting rid of the curve as you can see there. So you can probably see where this is going. We're gonna be animating this value. So at the start of the simulation, it's gonna look like this and then it's slowly gonna make its way up. The start value controls the start of the curve. If we drag this, we can see it's getting rid of it from the start. Let's take the input from the groove and plug it into the start and we'll plug it into the end so we have control over it over in the modifier stack. Next up, let's add some thickness. I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a curve to mesh. We'll place it right here. Then we need a profile, so we'll add in a circle, a curve circle, we'll place it right here. We can see here we have the radius and this is currently way too big, so let's bring this down to a value of 0.02 and enter. What we're going to do is at the end of the curve, it's going to become a point instead of having a sharp edge, as you can see right there. To do this, we need a couple of nodes. First off, we'll go over to curve and then select the spline parameter. We'll place that right here. We're going to be taking the factor output and plugging that into a set curve radius node. So we'll press shift A, go over to the curve, and then we'll find the set curve radius right here and place it just like this. If we then take the factor, plug it into the radius, we can see this is kind of working, but it's in the wrong position. You can see it's starting down here rather than starting up here like what we want. To fix this, let's add in a color and then a color ramp node and we'll place it here. Then we need to flip this, so click on that little button on the side and then we'll click on flip color ramp. So now it's starting at the top, which is good. We'll take the white value, drag it closer so it's a little bit more of a harsh cutoff rather than a smooth line. And that looks pretty good. The other thing that I want though is I want the start to also have that effect. So all we have to do is press Shift D, place the color ramp below it, take the factor, plug it into the factor, and then we need to flip the color ramp. So we'll flip it one more time. To combine both of these, let's press Shift A, go over to Utilities, and then add in a math node. We're gonna take the color, plug it into the bottom value, and set this over to multiply. So now what happens is if we drag the end down to zero and we slowly drag it up, we can see this is the effect that we get. And that is looking pretty cool. And now the last step is just to animate these start and end values. Let's go back over to the layout and then we'll jump over to the modifier tab. On frame one, we're going to set the end frame down to zero and then we'll add in a keyframe. We're gonna jump all the way to frame 150. We'll drag the end frame all the way up to the top and then add in another keyframe. Then at the end here, we're going to add in a keyframe to the start value on frame 180. Then we'll jump all the way to frame 230, set the start up to one so it disappears and then add in another keyframe. So here is the entire animation. There we go, that looks pretty good. The cool thing about using this method is that it's very customizable. At any point, we can come back into geometry nodes and customize how this spiral looks. For example, we can change the rotation, the set radius at any point, and it'll still animate properly. 
The other cool thing that we can do is instead of using a spiral, we can add in text and that will also work as well. To do this, we need to add in a text over here and then select the strings to curve node. If we take the curve instances and plug it into the trim curve, we can type in any word that we want. For example, blender. We can see here it is working and now we have text. There's one problem though, if we press the spacebar, it's not animated. The reason for that is because this is a connected curve. So we need to set this to a cyclic curve so it actually has a start and end. We can do this by adding in a curve and then set spline cyclic and place it right there. Now when we play this, we'll restart and play it. You can see it is now working and the animation is working properly. The other thing that you need to do if you want to add a fire simulation to this curve is you need to realize the instances. Right now the curve is an instance, so it's not going to work. We need to add in a instances and then realize instances and we'll place it right here. With this node, then we can add in the fire simulation and it will simulate properly. So that is one cool thing if you wanted to use text rather than a spiral. For this tutorial though, we'll be using the spiral. So I'm going to take this and plug it back into the trim curve. Now before we create the fire simulation, let me tell you guys about the sponsor of this video, ExpressVPN. Did you know that most public Wi-Fi networks, either at like a coffee shop, hotel, or airport, are not protected or secure? So you could just be chilling doing some work, but little did you know that there's a dude over in the corner stealing all of your information. That's where ExpressVPN comes in. It takes 100% of your network traffic and reroutes it through encrypted and secure servers. Not only that, but it also protects you from targeted ads and it masks your IP address so big tech companies can't steal your information while you browse the internet. A lot of the time, different streaming services like Netflix or Amazon Prime have movies or shows that aren't available in your country. ExpressVPN gets around this by being able to change your online location to over 90 different countries. I will always use ExpressVPN when I'm out using a public Wi-Fi just to make sure that my data is safe and secure. And you can do this as well by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment. This will allow you to get 3 months of ExpressVPN absolutely free. There's literally no reason not to try it out, and if you don't like it, you can cancel anytime. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to the tutorial. So now that we have everything in place, let's create the fire simulation. I'm going to press Shift A and add in a domain object, we'll scale this up and place it inside just like this. That looks pretty good. Next, we'll go over to the physics panel and then select the fluid and then change the type over to domain. For the domain resolutions, we're going to go with a value of 256. The time scale, which controls the speed of the simulation, let's go with a value of 0.5. The other important step is the time steps maximum and minimum values. With the default values of 1 and 4, sometimes you get this weird jittering effect in the fire simulation. To fix that, we need to set this up to 6 and then the minimum up to a value of three. We're also gonna turn on adaptive domain so the domain shrinks and scales down to the size of the fire. Then also in the fire panel, we're gonna set the reaction speed much higher because we want shorter flames. Let's go with a value of three. For the vorticity, we're gonna go with a value of 0.7 so there's more swirls and randomness. And then also just to save on render time and baking time, let's set the flame smoke to zero. I don't want there to be any smoke, I only want flames. We'll set the type over to modular, and then we'll turn on is resumable just in case we want to stop the render. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is opening up this render panel. Right here we have a velocity scale. This controls the amount of motion blur in the fire simulation. Let's set this lower to a value of 0.1, and then we'll talk about this more once we actually do the render. Next, for the inflow object, we're going to select our object right here, our curve. We'll select fluid and set the type over to flow. For the flow type, we're going to switch it over to fire. And then for the flow behavior, let's select inflow. The fuel option right here controls the rate of the flames. Let's go up to 1.5. The flow source, we're going to set the surface emission value down to 1. This will make sure that the fire is closer to the surface of the mesh. And then we're also going to enable a texture. This will give us more randomness in the flames and make it look a lot better. We're going to jump over to the texture panel, create a new one. We'll set the type over to clouds. And then for the size right here, we're going to go much lower to a value of 0.05 and enter. We're going to leave the rest of the settings at their default. We don't need to change anything else. 
And then also the size right here, I'm gonna go much lower as well. Let's go with a value of 0.4. We'll select that texture that we just created in the drop down menu. And finally, the last step before we bake this out is the offset. We're gonna be animating this value so it changes over time. So on frame one, we're gonna set it to zero and add in a keyframe. We're gonna jump all the way to frame 250. We'll set this up to a value of one and then add in another keyframe. Right now the interpolation has a curve, so it starts out slow and speeds up in the middle and slows down at the end. But if we were to drag over these keyframes and set it to linear, it's also gonna set the other frames to linear as well, which is not what we want. So let's open up the graph editor and only select the offset animation keyframes. We'll switch this over to the graph editor. You can press A to select everything, and then over on the left side, select only the offset. Then we'll press T and then select linear. So now you can see it's a straight line rather than a curve, just like that. At this point, we can bake it out. Let's select our domain object. Make sure you also save your project just in case Blender crashes. Then we can click on bake data. Once this is done baking, we'll take a look at the material and then render it out. All right, after a very long time, the simulation has finished baking. So now let's set up the material. We're gonna jump over to the shading workspace right here and with the domain selected, we're gonna click on new. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is switching over to the cycles render engine because in the domain settings down here at the bottom, we set the velocity scale to 0.1. This does not work in Eevee. So we're gonna be using the cycles render engine. Come over to the render panel and switch it over to cycles. For the device, we'll use the GPU. And now if we go into render view, we still can't see anything. What we need to do here is select the principled shader, go ahead and delete that, and then press Shift A, and we're gonna add in a shader and then a principled volume shader. We're gonna plug this directly into the volume of the material output. Now, you can set the black body intensity up to like two and you'll get the fire right there, but I do not like using the black body intensity. There's not a lot of control over how intense the fire is or what it looks like. So instead, we're gonna be setting up a couple of custom nodes right here. First off, let's add in an attribute node. In the name right here, we're gonna type in the word heat. We're gonna be taking the heat attribute from the simulation and plugging that into the emission strength. So we'll take the color, plug it into the emission strength, and once we do this, you should see this effect. To clamp down on a lot of this extra smoke and stuff, we're gonna press Shift A and add in a color ramp. We'll place it right here. Then if we take the black value, drag it closer, we can control how tall the flames are. What we're gonna do is drag this pretty close to the white value, and then right at the end here, we're gonna add in another black handle. So drag the white value closer, we'll hit the plus sign, drag this all the way to the right, and set this to a black color. This will give a really cool look for the fire. Now, if we want to control the strength of this, we're gonna add in a converter math node. We'll place it right here, switch the type over to multiply, and set the value down here. This now controls the strength of the emission. Let's go with a value of around 200. And that looks pretty cool. So you can see this is the effect of adding that black handle at the end here. You can see there is some uh, transparency in the middle. If this is just over on this side, it looks like that. But with it all the way to the right side and white in the middle, it gives a really cool look. The other thing that we're gonna do is hide the original geometry node curve. So with the sphere selected, we're going to hide it from the view and hide it from the render by selecting those two buttons on the top right there. Now for the color, we're gonna press Shift A, add in a new color ramp, we'll place it down here. We'll take the color of the heat, plug it into the factor, then the color is gonna go into the emission color. Now we're gonna add in a couple of handles to control the color. First off, we're gonna select the white handle. This is gonna be a nice bright yellow somewhere around here. Then this other handle that we just added, this is gonna be more of a reddish color. So we're gonna drag this down right about there and then drag it to the right until we get some red coming into the fire. Right about there looks pretty good. Now the fire simulation does look a little bit dull, so I'm gonna drag the uh, value over here up a little bit. Let's go with 300. And I think that looks just a little bit better. You can also, over here in the, the color management, we can open up this panel and set the look over to high contrast. This will make the colors pop even more. And there we go. I'm also gonna come over here to the background. We're gonna set the color all the way down to black, and this will give us a really nice look for the fire. And then finally, over in the render panel, we're gonna turn on motion blur. 
Both the shutter value and the velocity scale over in the domain control how much blur the fire will have. You can see in some of the animations on screen the different values and how they look. You want to be careful because if you go too high with the velocity scale, it's going to be way too blurred. So with a value of 0.1 for the velocity scale, we're also going to set the motion blur value down to 0.2, and I think that will look pretty good. The max samples right here, I'm going to go down to a value of 50, so it renders pretty quickly. And that is basically all we really need to do. From here, you can add in some camera animation and position and rotate the camera in certain angles so it looks really nice. And if you want to, you can go into the compositor and add in some glow to make the fire really stand out. And then from that point, you can render the animation. If you create something cool from this tutorial, I would love to see it. So make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.